process of building my pots is a long one. Over 10 hours of coiling, scoring, slipping, smoothing and joining went into this particular instalment of The Celestial Body, a tribute to my ongoing novel project, A New Dawn Rising. I build my pots using the method of coiling, which involves rolling out long coils of clay that I join together layer upon layer to build the walls of the piece. Over the course of the subject module, I developed a building technique that involved making several pieces that could be joined together to create the final pot. It was crucial to have a design of the pot beforehand, so I knew how each piece would be built to form the overall shape, essentially building from the middle outwards. Building on a circular wooden bat meant that not only was the piece easy to move about and store, but it meant that the diameters and circumferences of both pieces would line up when it came to joining. Using a series of shorter and shorter coils, I created a hemisphere to form the base of the ovular pot I would eventually end up with. When the pieces were leather hard, I paddled them to give a uniform shape and neat outline. The foot was made by using the slab building method, rolling out a slab of clay to a uniform thickness of about 8mm and cutting it into bands about 3cm wide. These pieces were then dried out to just less than leather hard so they could be made into circles for various parts of the foot. A circular clay slab was also cut out and left to dry to be used as the main part of the foot. The coiling, scoring and slipping process was repeated to make the top hemisphere. When it came to joining the two pieces, I found I wanted a bit more height in the base, so coiled an extra 10 centimetres to the hemisphere that had been joined to the foot to get the correct shape. The hemispheres were then joined together by scoring into the rims of each quite deeply and applying a thick clay slip to secure them. After the two pieces were securely joined and the moisture content was an equal leather hardness across the whole of the pot, I coiled the neck on top, being careful to use deep scores so the leather hard base would securely join to the new wet clay. Handles were added, but unfortunately I do not have footage of this part of the process. They were made via the pulling method and joined when the neck and the handles were slightly less than leather hard. A dark blue cobalt slip was painted onto the surface of the clay to begin this graffito process, using previously prepared digital drawings that were printed at various scales to figure out the composition, I would sketch or trace the illustrations onto the surface of the pot with a graphite pencil. The graphite is burned away in the bisque firing, so is a great way of planning out the surface illustrations. Using a pin tool, I scratched at the surface of the pot, removing a line of the slip to reveal the clay body underneath. The slip fires to a dark blue colour and the clay body to a near white, so it produces an inverted white line black background effect. This piece will then be left to dry out until it reaches the greenware stage, at which point it will undergo two firings, the first to 1000 degrees to turn the clay to ceramic and a second firing to 1140 degrees to melt an earthenware transparent glaze to the surface.